This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw isometric objects using Inkscape. And what isometric design is, it's a way of presenting a subject in three dimensions by putting it at a 30 degree angle. And it's actually a really simple and easy concept and once you catch the hang of it you could very easily draw very impressive and complex uh, designs using this, uh, this method. And if you do a quick Im image search on Google for isometric design, you'll see what I'm saying. There's a lot of impressive stuff and it's pretty easy to create once you get the hang of this. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this laptop right here. So with that being said, let's get rid of this and get started. So the first thing we'll do in Inkscape is we're going to set up our page with a grid that we could follow for our isometric drawing. So we're going to go to File, Document Properties, and we're going to come over to the tab that says Guides. Let's click on that. Oh, actually, no, Grids. We're going to come over to Grids. And from this drop-down, we'll select Ax Axonometric Grid and go ahead and click New. And where it says Spacing Y right here, we're going to want to change that from 1 to 10. So just uh, erase that, type in 10, hit Enter. And angle. the rest of these, video, the rest of these, uh, these values should be the same, angle X, angle Z. 30 and 30 and so on. So once you have that set, go ahead and close out of that and set your view to 100%. We'll do that by going to view. Uh, make sure you have custom selected first and then go to zoom and zoom in at one to one. And then we'll open up our edit objects, colors, gradients and stroke menu by clicking that button. So what we have here on the page now is an axonometric grid that's going to take all of our everything that we draw, it's going to give us a guide to draw everything that we need to draw at a 30 degree angle. So as you see here, we have big main lines right here. They're slightly thicker than the individual lines. And if you count them, you see there's one, two, three, four, five. There's five lines, five segments within each bold line. And we're going to use those as reference points for our drawing. And if you grab the Bezier pen, you'll see it snaps to each intersection of the two lines. So we're going to start maybe to the left over here, the bottom left, and we're going to snap the cursor onto the intersection of one of these main lines right here, just like that, and go ahead and click. And then we're going to go up three big segments. So there's one, two, and three. And once you get up to the third one, go ahead and click. And then we're going to go over on this line, we're going to go five segments. So I'm going to pan the page over by pressing down on the mouse on the mouse wheel and just moving the mouse and we can go one two three four five and go ahead and click and then we'll come down three more one two three and go ahead and click and then we could snap it back to the starting point just like that and what we'll do next is we're going to draw another rectangle within this rectangle only one segment within. So we'll start out one segment in like right here, the top left corner. Go ahead and click, come down to the bottom here. One segment before that one. Click, pressing down on the mouse wheel to pan the page around. Right there and click, right there. And then snap it back to the starting point, just like that. Now I'm gonna color this in. This is gonna make the screen of the laptop. I'm gonna go ahead and color this in blue. I'll give this maybe um, maybe this shade right here. And under the HSL tab, I'll slide this over to the right a little bit, maybe like that. And then we can go to our Stroke Paint tab, turn that off. And then we can go back to our Fill tab. And then let's go to our Select tool and click on this original shape that we drew. And let's give that a shade of gray, maybe 70%. Um, no, maybe 80, we'll do 80%. And we'll turn the stroke off, but instead of going to that tab and clicking on it, we'll just hold shift and click on the X over here on the left, and that'll get rid of the stroke. So the next thing we can do is go back to our Bezier pen, and we're going to draw the top edge of this laptop right here. We'll start at this top left corner, go up one segment, then go down to over here where this line comes out of the corner right there, snap it to that, and go here, connect it back to the starting point. And we're going to give that uh, a very, very light shade of gray, maybe even white. Well, not white, but a very light shade of gray, maybe 7.5%. If you hover your cursor over the shade, it'll tell you which percentage it is. I'm using 7.5 there. 
and then I'm going to hold shift and click on the X to get rid of the stroke. I'll press down on the mouse wheel to pan over here and then we'll create this side right here. We'll start at this corner, come up here, and go down there, go down there, and go back to the starting point. And I'm going to give this a slightly darker shade than this shade over here. I'm going to make this maybe um, maybe 20%. Okay, that works. And then hold shift and click on the X to get rid of the stroke. So what we'll do now is we'll create the keyboard portion of the laptop. I'll start at this bottom left corner. And I'm going to make this the same length that this is high. This was three main segments high. So I'm going to go one, two, three. Go ahead and click and then come along on this same line right here. If you want, you could hold control and it'll bring the line precisely down at that at that angle. And then connect it right there. And then connect it back to the starting point. And there you have that. And we're going to make this one the same shade that this top segment is. So we're going to press F7 to get the dropper, which is right here. We could also press F7 and then just go ahead and click on that segment to make it the same shade. And then we'll hold shift and click on the X to get rid of the stroke. And then let's go back to our Bezier pen. And let's draw the bottom edge of this, uh, this segment right here. We can start at this left corner, click there, go down to this one, and then go over here. And then click up here, connect it back together. I'm going to press F7 to get the dropper. I'm going to make this the same shade as this, but then I'm going to go and darken it a little bit by going to the L column, sliding that over to the left a little bit like that. And then we could hold shift, click on the X to get rid of the stroke. We go back to our Bezier pen. You can just press B on the keyboard to get it instead of going and clicking on, on it all the time. And then we can start at this corner right here and draw this shape. I'm going to put this right here and then back to the starting point. And then I'll press F7 to get the dropper. And I'll go ahead and make this the same shade that this edge is right here, just like that. And we can hold Shift on the keyboard and get rid of the stroke. I'm actually going to go back to the Select tool and click on that. And I'm going to hold Shift and click on this right edge right here so we have them both selected. And I'm just going to make that slightly darker by sliding this to the left. I don't like how the shade was previously too close. It looks too close to this shade right here. I want them to be different. So I went and made them a little darker. And the next thing we'll do is we'll make the segment where the keyboard goes. Uh, we can go back to our Bezier pen, click, uh, just press B on the keyboard. And we'll start at this top corner, but we'll go down one segment first and then click there. And we'll come down this line right here and start, we'll, we'll stop right here one segment before this edge. Go ahead and click. And then I'll bring this down to maybe here, maybe a little farther. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, no, maybe seven. Um, no, I'll do eight. Eight segments in. And go ahead and we could hold control and bring that line straight up to the very same plane that that segment's on. And then once you click that, connect it back to the starting point. And we can press F7 on the keyboard to get the dropper and make this the same shade by clicking on that. But we'll make this slightly darker by sliding the L column to the left a little bit. And then we can hold Shift and click the X to get rid of the stroke. And then we'll draw the little mouse pad right here. So we'll go back to our Bezier pen and this segment right here is five main segments long. If you see these main lines, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to draw this on the middle segment. So it's going to be the third one in from either side. So it's going to start here. We could look at the main lines right here. One, two, three. Three segments in and one small segment from the keyboard. Go ahead and click. And I'm going to make this maybe one, two, three three segments long and then we'll do one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we'll do five. And connect it back up to that same uh, guide that that one was on. Connect it back to the starting point. 
You can press F7 on the keyboard to get the dropper and make this the same shade that the keyboard is. Hold Shift and click the X to get rid of the stroke. And then we can go back to our arrow. And actually, I'm going to draw one more thing here. I'm going to give this a little bit of a shadow, a little bit of a back shadow over here. Let's go back to our Bezier pen. And let's, uh, let's connect this one to the very top right corner over here. Go ahead and click. And let's bring this line down to where this line goes out. So if you want, you just put your cursor on it and kind of just follow it. Follow that line until it reaches the same plane that the original point was on, which is right here. And click and then hold control and bring this down to here. Click and then connect it all together. Oops. Connect it all together. Let's turn that black and let's hold shift and click on the X to turn the stroke off. And we could take the opacity on this and just bring this down a fair amount just to create the illusion that it's uh, kind of like, like it's casting a shadow behind the laptop. And then I'm going to hold control and roll down on the mouse wheel to zoom out. And now that we're done drawing this, we can get rid of these grids because we don't need them anymore. We can go back to File, Document Properties, and go ahead and click Remove. And that should get rid of the grids. And then we can close out of that. And we go back to our Select tool. We can click and drag over the entire thing and group it together. We could hold Control and Shift to scale it down or scale it up. And we are finished. So that's how you can draw isometrics uh, using Inkscape. And if you have any questions, just let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.